So there is a fundamental flaw in the way that most marketing conversations begin. And it's most readily apparent when you have a group of people who are brought together and tasked with the job of coming up with uh, a marketing strategy for a business or an organization. Because inevitably what happens in those situations is you have like the social media expert says, oh, well, let's do this on Facebook and this on Twitter and this on LinkedIn. And the person that's the graphic designer says, well, your logo and your website don't really reflect the, or don't really portray or reflect the uh, image you're trying to portray. So, you know, we need to work on those things. And, you know, like the, the guy that built his business marketing using smoke signals says, well, this is the kind of like <laughs> wood you need to use and, you know, send up your plumes this often and, you know, you'll be in good shape, right? There are no shortage of ways you can advertise your business. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And the thing is, all of these things can and do work given the right audience and the right situation. I specialize in Google AdWords and pay-per-click marketing, and I could stand up here and make a really compelling case why that's the place most businesses and organizations can start. But here's the thing. That advice, as the advice from the social media expert and the graphic designer, probably not the smoke signal guy, it's well-intentioned and it may be spot on. But when you start here, you gloss over some things that are way more important to the success of a business's marketing. And it's those things that we tend to gloss over that I want to talk about today. And the way I want to do it is I want to share a story. It's kind of a case study in progress with a client I'm working with that just her situation just perfectly encapsulates a lot of what I wanted to share with you today. And once I share that story, I want to go back and give you some specific takeaways that you can bring back to your business to improve your marketing. So this woman is a marriage counselor and she's been using Google AdWords for a while and she approached me because she was measuring the results from AdWords closely and she knew number one, she wasn't getting a lot of leads and number two, the leads that she was getting were not of good quality. So she was interested in having me take over the campaign. So I went behind the scenes and the campaign was being managed by another company and when I looked at the campaign, it looked pretty darn good. You know, they were doing things the way that you, you would build a really good AdWords campaign. It was structured well. They were um, obviously paying close attention to things. Um, they were tracking and measuring the results. It was a technically sound AdWords campaign. But when I took a step back, what I realized was AdWords wasn't the problem. It was the foundation that AdWords was built upon. So I went back to this marriage counselor and I said, listen, instead of having me take over this campaign, hire me as a marketing consultant because what we need to do is build the foundation here. We need to work on the messaging, the offers, the things that will not only better support your AdWords campaign, but also support any other marketing efforts that you do in the future. So that's, that's what we did. And we spent an hour and a half or so on the phone during our initial consultation, and I tried to boil it down to three key findings, which is kind of hard to boil an hour and a half down to that. But these are the key things that I found. Number one, her ideal clients, the ones that she wanted to work with more than any other, that she has a good history with, that can afford her rates, everything like that, were entrepreneurs, busy executives, and their spouses who are having marriage problems. Number two, the reason that they were searching for a marriage counselor is because they were at a tipping point in that marriage and they didn't know that the marriage could be saved. The number one thing on their mind, that number one question, that number one problem is, can my marriage be saved? And then the third thing I learned is that she can pretty much tell from a 20 minute or less conversation whether that marriage has a good shot of being fixed or not. So based on this, I recommended a few key changes that are in various stages of being implemented. Number one, I suggested messaging that specifically calls out to entrepreneurs, busy executives, and their spouses. If you are looking, if you're in that group and you're looking for a marriage counselor, what ad are you going to click on? The one that talks about the generic, hey, I'm a marriage counselor and I can help, or the one that says, I specifically specialize in working with entrepreneurs, busy executives, and their spouses. 
She changed her ads and AdWords, nothing else, just the ads. And she got more quality leads, and I think it was two or three weeks after she changed just the ad copy and nothing else than she had in the previous three months combined. She was offer, offering a free consultation, as was all of her competitors, and it, there's nothing wrong with offering a free consultation. But most, a lot of businesses do it, especially in the service industry, and a lot of people know it's kind of another word for a sales pitch. So we kind of changed that up a little bit. She's still offering pretty much the same thing, but we're calling it a free Can My Marriage Be Saved assessment. An audit, an assessment, something like that has a higher perceived value than just a generic free consultation. But more importantly, we named it the Can My Marriage Be Saved assessment. We are focusing our messaging on the key question, the key problem that are on the minds of her ideal prospects. And then lastly, I advised her to use the ads and the landing page to sell the assessment, and then sell the assessment to sell her services. A lot of times we ask our marketing to do too much too quickly. We need to take things a step at a time. The chances of somebody landing on her page, cold traffic from AdWords, who has no idea who this marriage counselor is, seeing her message and say, oh, here's my credit card, is highly unlikely. So we break it down. There has to be at least a phone call in there. We may find out we need something before that. But the key is to take it a step at a time and don't sell the end result at the first step. So with that story as a backdrop, I'd like to kind of go over and, and give you some key takeaways that I'd like you to bring back to your business. Mm -hmm. Number one, focus on a very specific target audience. Yes, I mean, she can work with anybody who's having a problem in their marriage. She could work with people who aren't married, who are having relationship problems. I'm not telling her or you to only focus your business on one specific target audience. But what I am saying is when you're coming up with your marketing campaigns, you should focus on one specific target audience. The big mistake a lot of people make is they try to be all things to all people. And when you try and do that, your message resonates with nobody. When you are very focused on a specific audience, you are much more likely to get the attention and the interest of that audience. Number two, focus on one specific problem that that target audience has. Now this could be 1A, because they go hand in hand. You know, people could come to her because there is an affair, they're constant arguing in the marriage, there's lack of communication, drug use. But we boiled it down to the can my marriage be saved? In my business, I focus on marketing to personal injury attorneys from small and solo practice firms. Even within that small group, there are different problems that they have. There's this group who just is struggling to get leads. They're totally confused and frustrated with the internet, and they just don't know where to start. There's another group who's already investing or has invested in AdWords, and they're spending thousands of dollars a month. The problem that a lot of them have is that they really don't know if that money is being well spent. They don't know if they're generating an ROI. So my message to them, hey, here's a system that we could put in place. You could track your ROI down to the penny and improve the results of your campaign. That message to this group goes way over their heads. So I have to come to them with a very different message. Focus on a specific problem that your ideal audience has and you are much more likely to get the attention and interest of that group. It's not about tactics. Pay-per-click marketing, email marketing, cold calling, direct mail, social media, all these things are delivery mechanisms. If you don't have the foundation to support it, the messaging, the offers, the tactics don't matter. Number four, sell the next step. Don't ask your marketing to do too much too quickly. We covered that on the last slide. There's really nothing to add there. And number five, track your results closely. Now this is something this client was doing really well already. Most business owners don't. You would not hand your money over to an investment advisor without having accountability there, right? You, you want those monthly statements to see 
how much money you have, is it increasing in value, decreasing in value, what it's invested in. But most of you don't require that same accountability from your marketing dollars, and there's no difference. The more closely you can track and measure your results, the more likely you are to improve things over time by focusing your money on what's working and what's generating an ROI and not spending money on the things that aren't. Now, I have one more slide left. Um, instead of jumping to it and, and concluding the formal part of this presentation, I am going to implement something I learned at an E3 meeting from <laughs> former member Fred Miller, which is to take questions first and then finish uh, with, with your last slide. So with that. Adam, is it fairly said, I'm looking at uh, point number two, focus on one specific problem your, idea, your ideal client has. If they have multiple problems or if there are different clients that could have different problems, are you saying to focus on one at a time or overall in your business only focus on one? I'm, what I am saying, that's a good question. I am saying both for focusing on a target audience and focusing on uh, a problem, focus at one at a time. Once you, once you get really good at marketing to that specific audience, that, that specific prospect with that specific pro problem, then you know, build another campaign that focuses on another problem. But it's much more effective if you can focus out on one at a time, because if, again, if you try and, like if, if she, if the marriage counselor tried to come up with a message that talked about um, affairs and constant arguing and <coughs> drug use and all the potential problems somebody in a marriage could have, that's just not gonna resonate with anybody. But if she can come at it from, can my marriage be saved? or have a marketing um, uh, campaign focused on just if there was an affair in that marriage. It's going to be much more effective. Yeah, great. Thank you. Adam, after you've created the foundation, you've got the solid messaging, you've done all of this, then you do eventually have to get to the tactical execution. Yes. Can you tell us some guidelines for determining how to make the right decisions about which tactic to use for which kinds of situations? Yes, great question. The interesting thing about building the foundation and the messaging and all that, it helps guide you towards certain um, tactics. So for example, uh, there's, there's what I call a visible audience and an invisible audience. So uh, in, you know, I'll take an example from my business. When I am trying to track down personal injury attorneys who are, um, uh, already using Google AdWords, I can go to Google and I could see very clearly who are the attorneys that are using Google AdWords. And then I can go and get their address, phone number, email, things like that. So I can use direct mail, I can use email marketing, things like that. Uh, possibly LinkedIn, you know, if, if you get that information. Um, there may be audiences where they're invisible. So let's say you're a real estate agent and you want to know who's going to be selling their house in the next six months. You can't get a list of that. So that is going to impact how you approach your marketing and what tactics you use and how you use them. Yes. I want to talk about tracking the results. Can you guys hear me through this? Okay. Um, I've worked with agencies actually all across the world for different companies I've had. And it doesn't matter how good they are. At some point, they deliver me monthly reports that I don't understand. Or that deliver that they're doing a great job, and it's not really translating the results. And I finally told them if my bank account doesn't go up, you're not doing something right. And what was frustrating to me is if I have a $2,000 a month budget to manage them, I found that they were using three of my hours to protect their job. So I finally said, don't send me a single report. For my three hours of report, I want, to send, I want you to send me three more hours of content because I didn't know how, how else to track it. And it still is a struggle. And everybody who wants to sell marketing wants to tell me that you need to see the results. I know that, but I've never seen anyone deliver those results well. Yeah. 
So tracking, there are no shortage of data points that you can get when you track marketing. I always focus on the one that really matters is ROI. You know, if you're putting a dollar into the Google Gumball machine, are you getting at least a dollar back? You know, um, and is that done for questions or? Okay. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you need to track, I, I'm focused on actual sales, like tracking actual sales and, and tracking that back to the specific keywords and AdWords and ads that led to the sale. Um, the, a lot of the other stuff, th there's a marketer out there, um, he talks about people who track website hits, traffic to your, to your website, and he says HIT stands for how idiots track success. <laughs> 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 you know, it, it's great having people come to your website, but at the end of the day, you, you want people who are going to buy from you, and that, that's the only thing that matters. Um, adding on that, this is a, a comment more than a question. Um, combining four and five is a really important thing to think about um, when answering that question, because the next step, um, I think Adam's point in number four is that you don't jump from hello, pleased to meet you to let's have the sale. You jump to hello, pleased to meet you, would you like to take this free assessment? And so you should measure, is my investment against getting people to take the assessment leading to more people taking the assessment? Then you should measure out of X number of people taking the assessment is whatever I do as a follow-up leading to more people uh, signing up for an appointment or a, a telephone consultation. So um, s defining what the next steps are in the process and then are the tactics against that process actually leading to upticks against those goals is really what measuring is all about. Great, great point. Well, I think I need to wrap things up, Mark. Okay. So I want to finish up where we started. There are no shortage of ways that you can advertise your business. And yeah, you know what? You could do an AdWords campaign, you could do email marketing, you could go to a networking event, and you might get some clients out of it. You know, if you throw enough spaghetti against the wall, some of it's gonna stick. But if you take a step back and you focus on who is that target market you're trying to reach, what is a specific problem they have that you can help them solve? Focus on building that foundation instead of jumping to the tactics, taking things a step at a time and tracking and measuring your results. If you do those things, it's like spreading glue on that spaghetti. <laughs> and the next time you throw it against the wall, a hell of a lot more of it's gonna stick. Thank you. <laughs>